Ladies, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of MLSNet.com's Extra Time. We were gone last week for Labor Day. We didn't want to have to labor during the Labor Day week. And now we're back. And it is September. The playoffs, the playoff hunt is heating up. MLS very, very tight right now. Chicago is the team that's on the move. They jumped into that eighth spot. We're going to talk a little bit later with Chris Roll from the fire. And a look at some of the newcomers that have made it into this league and made the league really exciting. So, Shep, without any further ado, we have to get into the playoff race because it's finally heating up. You basically have five teams on the cusp fighting for that eighth spot. The top teams are kind of already set with the DCs and New Englands, the Chivas, the Houston. They're all set, but it's at five on the bottom right there. New York, Kansas City, Chicago, Columbus, and Colorado. Those are the five pretty much fighting for that last spot. Well, Greg, this new playoff format, spectacular. It's great. Now you have real interest in terms of who's going to get in, who's not. I think out of those teams that you just mentioned, I think New York is in, will get in. I think Chicago's going to get in. I think Colorado's going to get in. Two that I think will be looking in and be left out, that would be Kansas City, that would be Columbus. Well, Kansas City obviously doesn't want to hear that. They had such a great run early on. Now, what do you think it is about Colorado that's going to get them in? They're, they're pretty much sitting in the bottom of this group. Well, they had a bump against L.A., but I think they have really been playing well. Fernando Clavijo has kind of rescued that clubhouse. They've been playing well on the defensive side of the ball. Connor Casey has given them a good holding striker up top, and I think they're good defensively. I think defense wins championships. Goals are beautiful, but you've got to be able to defend. Yeah, well, that's probably true. I mean, Colorado's looking good. They also have this young kid, Colin Clark, on the left who's been phenomenal. Now, you mentioned New York bringing, making it in because I agree with you about Colorado and mm -hmm. Chicago, but for me, I think Kansas City's in and New York is out. They lost 3-0 to Chivas this past weekend, and as you yourself said before the show, they were shocking in this match. And I just think that there's something going wrong in New York, and they're going to go into some sort of a free fall. Wow. I, I mean, I'll disagree. I, I, I'm not defending them against Chicago. That was about as a pathetic job of individual defending I've ever seen. And it's the defense that's going to yeah. kill them in the long run, I think. But they do have, I think, the experienced veteran savvy players like Claudio Reyna, uh, Juan Pablo Anjo, Waterus is healthy in goal. Those are big time players. They also have Dima Kovalenko. He's back in the lineup after that mm -hmm. car accident. He's an underrated player on that team. Well, Dima is certainly important for that team. For me, though, I think those experienced players, it's their first season in MLS with all the travel, playing on turf all season, I think that the experience, or their age, I should say, instead of the experience, is going to get to them. Juan Pablo on hell. He'll be in the playoffs. <laughs> now, the team in the Eastern, Eastern Conference that is streaking right now is Chicago. Since Juan Carlos Osorio took over, they're 4 3 and 1. They've made it into that eighth spot in the playoffs. And we're joined now by young striker Chris Rolfe of the Chicago Fire. Chris, at an early age, you've become an impact player. The injuries hurt you this year. You're back on the field now. How is it to play with Juan Chope in front of you or next to you and Blanco behind you? It's great. You know, those guys between them have a lot of experience and. You know, they've played against the top competitions in the world, and, um, you know, I'm able to learn a lot from these two guys, and, you know, at times it's hard to communicate, um, especially with Cuauhtémoc, but, uh, you know, Paulo speaks English very well, and, you know, he helps kind of translate between myself and, and Blanco. You know, looking at the playoff race, you guys are in that eighth spot right now. You know, if we put you on the spot, do you think you're going to make it? Yeah, I, I think we will. I know you, if you look at our schedule, um, we have a tough road ahead of us. You know, we, we've got our nose in there, and I think, you know, we're going to stay. So as Chris Rolfe just said, Chicago has a tough schedule ahead of themselves, but they're starting to blend all their players together. Rolfe playing alongside Juan Chope seems to be picking up his rhythm. Blanco obviously brings so much into that midfield. Chicago on a roll. I, I wouldn't say on a roll, but I, no, I, I, you okay. know, I, I agree. I think they're, they're going in the right direction, right. And, and they've added some talented players, and, and Chris Ralph. I mean, they need him back on the field. They have him back on the field. And I also think they've added a big-time defender, which they sorely needed, Conde. Yeah, conde has been terrific. You know, there was, I talked to someone who watched the Columbus game this past weekend who said Conde stepped on the field and immediately was the best defender in the league. Now, I'm not sure if I agree with that, but he certainly adds something to a defense that was leaking goals all season long. Another player also that hasn't come in, Justin Mapp, has been injured for a while. We'll see what he, happens when he comes back in there. So Chicago... In that eighth spot for the playoffs, we'll see if they can keep it. So the Honchos at headquarters for MLS have come up with a new award. The MLS Newcomer of the Year Award, and I think it's great. Because they're not really rookies, so they're not eligible for that one. 
But now they have their own award, and this year the newcomers have been fantastic. All the big names. It's not just Beckham and Angel and, and Baros Kelotto. I mean, you've got the Tohas of the world and Galindo and Emilio and Fred. There are so many names. Who would you put at the top of your list for the Newcomer of the Year Award? Oh, first of all, Greg, I totally agree because the newcomers really are the barometer of the level of talent in Major League Soccer, and it's been spectacular. What, what a cast of characters. I'm going to pick my two top guys, Juan Pablo Angel for New York and Galindo. Uh, for Chivas, I think those two guys have been spectacular. Well, what do you think that they've brought to their teams? I think, Greg, the obvious thing is goal scoring, ability, you know, creativity, great on the ball. They can break down a defense. But I also love their work ethic. These guys come in like warriors for 90 minutes. They're not here to party, they're here to win a championship. They've both been spectacular. Well, they have. And, but, you know, it's always easy to go with the fireworks guys. I mean, I'm going to go with Pablo Rochetti down in Dallas. Holding midfielder in there, I think he's been terrific. He's had a great attitude. He's been a general for a first-year coach in Dallas. And he's just given them that sort of strong presence in the middle that they needed in order to go forward the way they have and have all that skill going forward, too. Yeah, I can't disagree with you. You're much more cerebral how well, you break you down know, the game. I, I go defenders with, have the brains, right. and the goalkeepers not necessarily. But I will, go the other, yeah. I will go the other way also with Luciano Emilio in D.C. He's got 18 goals. Could be the first 20 goal scorer in the league since 2002. And I just think he's been spectacular in giving them another weapon up there. Yeah, a lot of great candidates. I think we've identified four of the very best. Well, I think uh, obviously I've identified the two very <laughs> best. So if you, though, have your opinion on who might the two best be, you can email us here at extratime at mlsnet.com. And unfortunately, we're out of time. But this is the home stretch of the season. So join us next week for another edition of mlsnet.com's Extra Time. I'll be here. Shep will be here. And we'll stick around.